such a good boy. Wow. Okay, we're here. We've arrived. Um, we've met Andy. I picked up all of his pedals. I'm now in the position of putting his G2 in the board. And I have all of these lovely things, which uh, I put in place. So I've pre-made most of the cables using the wonderful Evidence SIS solderless system. Now I'm just transferring the inputs and outputs from the backboard that I've made like from the shell into the real deal. Jobs are good. Right. So yes, Tom stopped putting the pedals in. Where do I start? So the first on the board is Andy's timeline. Now, um, you want to hear this in the, the previous video that we did, you'll hear how Andy uses the timeline. It's basically, it's in the loop, it's on all the time and he uses his expression pedal to simply push the level of the effect up when he needs it and to bring it up when he doesn't. Basically, I've got the timeline, the Strymon timeline in the loop for everything. Yeah. It's basically always on. Yep. And I've got it set up to sound pretty much like my two deluxe Memory Man Echoes. Right, okay. Which has the modulation that I love some more so on, on, mm. on the repeats. Mm. Blends it in. Nice. Kind of re replicating the old uh, tape echo, yeah. you know. So that's in there. It's all plumbed into the uh, Cinco Cinco, which is the five and five out patch bay. Right. Next up, loop one, the compressor. Uh, so we use, or I, the way I like to do it, is with this pedal board tape. Um, I used to use pedal board tape on both sides and if I need something that's going to be locked down a position and never move then that's what I'll do. I'll have pedal board tape on the bottom and the top. But Andy likes to chop and change. We all do. Um, but Andy likes to chop and change for sure. So what I do is I put this, um, it's like a, a professional really high grade quality loop velcro on the bottom and I put the pedal board tape on the pedal itself. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because what happens with normal Velcro is once you've got it on there, more often than not, you'll actually pull the entire Velcro off the board. But we're using it like this, the pedal board tape is strong enough to, to stick to the pedal and it will stick to the board, no problem. But then it comes off without having to rip the whole board apart. in there nicely now that that won't move also because of the way that we do the cases and they're all padded with foam the foam presses down on the pedals and it keeps everything in place but if I need to move it it comes off you know pedal board tape still on the pedal velcro still on the board so I can you know move things around so there you go so this is the new Carl Martin um, compressor limiter. Uh, it's the nine volt version. Okay, so there's no mains lead here, it's nine volts. But you'll also notice on here, there's a remote, remote foot switch input. So by plugging this into one of G2's remote switch outputs on the back here, Andy can control which side of the compressor he wants to use using these remote switches here. So it's all part of a preset. He can choose you know, which side of the compressor he wants or no compressor at all. Snazzy. We're putting on now this very groovy uh, GNI chorus. And that chorusing I'll use on the lead channel too sometimes. <laughs> So one thing that I will say that is absolutely essential, if you are building a pedal board for somebody else, every step of the way you need to check. Every time you plug something in, check it and make sure it works. Um, if you get to the end of the build and you're only checking it for the first time and something's wrong, you don't have any idea where to start. So you know, as you go along, check. One of the things that I do is um, I, also, you know, I take photos on my phone, 
of the layout and I make sure that once the layout's agreed, I make sure that the layout is exactly as um, the client would want it. So just checking the position of the, the phase 90 there and he wanted it next to the chorus pedal. Even though with this picture, all the pedals aren't the same, I know what each of these pedals represents because I had to do a mock-up without Andy's pedals. Um, but we got the position of everything, you know, right. So we've got the SL drive here. That's going to be going into loop six. So. Oh, could be better. This is a little present to Andy. Uh, this is, um, it's a heavily modded um, Overlord tube driver, but the output impedance is quite high. So we put a grumpy bot buffer directly after it. It brings the output impedance down and then it plays really nicely with everything else, the delays, the choruses and things. Reminiscent of um, Eric Johnson type lead sound. Um, yeah, and once these are modded, really great sounding pedal. Right, cool. So, SL drive. I'm going to put you in loop 10. One thing I did yesterday before I left is I zip tied all the pairs of cables together. But like a complete legend. Oh, hang on. I doubted myself, but I shouldn't have, because I did bring my snips. Okay. Coffee. I'm on no sleep, baby. No sleep. So normally, pedal board tape is deep enough to sit above low profile feet that sit on your pedals. But here, because we have this instructions here, I don't want to cover that up. I'm going to cut the pedal board tape down the middle. I'm going to carefully position it yep. so we end up with this. Um, yeah, easy to get up with the screws and not going to disrupt the instructions. It is so strong, this stuff, especially using it like this. It just works so well. Okay, and again. I've finished the top row of pedals now. Okay, the way I do my boards is like this. Anything that you need to get the foot switches on goes on this top bridge we call here. Anything that you don't need to get your foot switches on, like so this blues driver, that is gonna sit underneath the bridge, like this, okay? And what happens there is because I'm not having to use the, the foot switch, it can tuck underneath, and I'm saving all that space so the boards become, the, the footprint of the board becomes much smaller, okay? And anything underneath here, this bridge tilts up like this, and I can still get to all the cables and everything I need to get to here. The reason we don't need to get to the foot switch is because this is in a loop in G2. He accesses the sound of this pedal via these foot switches here. Okay, This is still in a loop in G2, but it has two speeds, a slow speed and a fast speed. So he switches that manually. So he thinks like the timeline with tap tempo. Yeah, if you want to switch that, you need to switch that manually, get your foot to it. Um, so we leave that in a position that's accessible for Andy to do that. Okay, this is a really cool trick that I've learned. Um, because Andy already has Velcro on a lot of his pedals, what I've done here, um, normally putting Velcro or any adhesive is the last thing I do. I always put the audio in, put the power in, make sure everything's working, then finally I'll Velcro everything down. But because the Velcro is already on here, I've just got a thin piece of cardboard laid down over the top of the, the loop Velcro here. So I will put everything in place first, make sure it all works, and once I'm happy, I'll simply pull the cardboard out, and then all the pedals will drop in position onto the loop Velcro. Job's done. Okay, so we've jumped on a little bit from last time. Um, we have all of the bottom row pedals here that are plumbed into all of the loops on G2 in here. The pedals that we have on the bottom row are the EP booster. Um, then we have the Octafuzz, it's another GNI pedal. Great sounding Oct Octafuzz, it's really cool. The always wonderful Pog, Micro Pog from EH. The Blues Driver. Um, you'll hear again on the previous video that we did at, at, with Andy in London, just how he uses this and it's amazing. This is his clean tone. 
spend a lot of time on the neck pickup. Right. With the sound that's actually pretty gained up. I mainly use that tone for... Like when I did Gone on the Resolution record. I mean, it's, it's that gained up tone, which is the volume back down. Yeah, yeah. And then this, the new acquisition, the Angry Charlie, um, which also sounds... Astonishing. Angry Charlie, the JHS. Angry Charlie. I know. Right. So sweet. So that's been that's the, that'll be the lead tone tonight for that. First gain pedal I found that I can really rely on for the my entire uh, gain, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you remember what we're talking about before with the cardboard? So we have everything plumbed in. So very carefully. I'm just going to remove the cardboard. That's one. And two bits of cardboard. Place everything down. There we go. Everything appears to be in order. We might be done, mate. So. Uh, just using the label maker, um, I'm just making up some labels for Andy. We've changed the function of this last output on the Cinco Cinco. Uh, it was going to be connect to connect the expression pedal here for the timeline, but that can go in straight here. We're going to use that to connect to the remote switch here on G2 so that Andy can change the channels of his Lone Star. So, that's swanky. This here, this is basically all the connections to Andy's amp from the amps effects loop send then to the amps effects loop return left which is mono or return right which is stereo and it always stays in stereo and then the amp channel select so all those five um, connections there straight to the amplifier happy days and then this expression pedal stereo cable here will simply plug into the expression input there plugs into the expression part of that cable and that will just sit one other thing I'm going to do, I'd like to do this. I'm just going to label up what each of the loops in G2 is connected to. So it's quite a simple process. So I just print off um, basically three letter versions of all the loops. No problem. It's pretty sexy. All right, mate. The, the, the Angora stage, yeah? All right, buddy. See you soon. Bye. Uh, that was Andy. We have to take this um, over to the Angora stage. And he's going to meet us there in an hour. So basically, they don't even get a sound check. He has to plug in and play. So no pressure. No pressure. That's it. Man, she's pretty. Isn't that lovely? How long did that take us, Mick? I think about two hours, two and a half. It's pretty good. Can we have a little lie down now? So, we're now gonna take this over to the stage. Uh, we're gonna get it set up. Andy's signing over at the Ibanez booth. Then he's gonna come and join us and we shall um, see if we can't get some noise happening. Absolutely crazy. 
We got all the reworking and then one of the amplifiers, the rectifier valve had gone on it. So, uh, the, but the Lone Star, you can actually, well, the rectifier valve was switched to, to silicon mode. So you can hear Andy there now, his rig's perfect, sounding awesome. Uh, big smiles from him out the front. Um, I need a beer, I really need a beer. So yeah, that was it, job done. Cheers guys. You're into the documentary. Well done. Thank you.